Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're in a data center but we're only here to talk. I do quite a bit of cabling at work and we use fiber optic cables and well everybody uses fiber optic cables because the speeds that we are working with they're rather high and you need fiber optics to do that but it's not always the case so that's what I want to have a bit of a chat about because fiber optic cables are great at long distances there is no replacement for them at that point well maybe some satellites but but i'm ever so slightly short on satellites these days so in the data center it's pretty normal to have a rack full of servers and then you have your top of rack switches usually there are two of those you want two switches at the top of the rack where you then connect all your servers to the top of the rack you have two network ports you connect one to one switch and one to another switch that's kind of the minimum if you want to have a bit of redundancy and this is where i want to interrupt you and tell you that i don't recommend using fiber optic cables for that and if you're in doubt um, this is a fiber optic cable and you have your fiber optic cable and it's usually um, this connector here which is called an lc lc that means that this is lc and the other end there's also an LC connector and then you put your SFP on there which is um, like this and then you have like a 10 gigabit connection between those two so you pop this one in the network card of your computer do I have a network card? I have a network card that's a dual port 10 gigabit network card so uh, it already has some SFPs in it we'll just borrow one of those holes and then you pop that in your computer here or server of course and um, clickety click you are connected to the to the network and then you have your other one very often these will be sitting already in the switches so you you pop that in your top of rack switch uh, we have a <laughs> we have a top of shelf switch over here not uh, connected or powered on but yeah you pop that in there and then you're connected to your network it's not even a switch that's a f that is a IBM fiber channel switch never mind it's the same thing it's not the same thing but the connections are the same thing so now you have your connection to your server and um, yeah this can be all good no problems the issue is that uh, these connectors well it, it only takes the slightest touch and you have to clean these I have done multiple videos showing you how dirty these will become if you just touch them with a finger that's um, it's, it's very touchy excuse the pun and um, so that's that's an issue plus the cable is expensive and you can't bend it too much it's they can also be quite fragile then we have the SFPs these ugh, they are complicated and they use power it might not be a whole lot of power but it they use quite a bit of power compared to the size of them I don't know if you've ever tried to take one of these out and like feel it some of them becomes warm where you don't want to touch them like that it's, that would just be too much for your hand that immediately tells you that there is being wasted some power inside of these um, what they do if you probably know that there is two connections one of them is a laser and the other one registrates a laser that means that you're blowing a laser connection out through one of them that goes through the fiber optic cable and then it receives uh, transmission from a laser in the other end and the other end uh, reads that and uh, actually on on here there are little arrows on it I'm not sure if that's focusing there you can see those two little arrows that means if the if the light is going in or going out so you can see over here it's going out and it comes in over here that might be helpful 
um, as these cables transmit on one and receives on the other one you can actually mix these around so that you could have a laser and a laser pointing in the same direction and meeting on the middle and yeah it doesn't work when they do that so a connection like this becomes very complicated there is multiple ways this can fail on you you have an SFP in both ends you have no less than four fiber optic connections that needs to be very clean and also this inside of here actually also needs to be very clean that becomes dirty if this is dirty you can clean this uh, and put it in here and everything is good but if this is dirty and you put it in here guess what becomes dirty that one plus the cable is fragile there is nothing but trouble here that's why I would recommend and this is not sponsored um, SF has actually tried and asked if we could do a collaboration video but well they don't have any affiliate thing so we haven't done anything so there is no way for me to get rich but in this case it doesn't matter they still have a very good service so even if they're not paying me I will still recommend them that they're, they're rather good and I've purchased quite a bit of their products for myself so and I have also done other reviews of stuff like I have done a review uh, with a programming thing that can program these these things but um, you purchase the cable like this and it's a copper cable with SFPs in each end except uh, I have a whole bundle of them here so let's let's take let's have one out See if I can do that. So here I have a three meter long, ten gigabit dock cable, direct attached cable connection. I'm not sure what the C is for, but dock. And we haven't talked about this, but these SFPs can be quite dutchy. Uh, they can be coded for the equipment that they are supposed to be used for. So you can have an SFP. That will only work in an, in an Hewlett Packard switch or in a Dell switch or in a Cisco switch. These cables, I haven't had any bad issues with them yet. So you can connect this and this um, on the back of your rack. And these are available in multiple lengths. And the big features with them is that, well, they are not as fragile, they're not as complicated, and they're not as expensive as the other solution. This entire dock cable usually costs the same as a regular um, fiber optic cable without the SFPs. So um, you get kind of the SFPs for free. 10 gigabit SFPs, they are not that expensive anymore, but it's still an expense because it's very, very normal to have multiple connections in a server. So. SFPs in the server, SFPs in the switches and what we have are our VMware servers and the VMware servers they have four connections for their networking there's some management and there's some vMotion and there's some other stuff but four, four, four network connections they do also need to be redundant then for the storage there's an additional two fiber optic connections and then there's one copper management port which we can forget about but that means that there is six, I'm missing a finger, there is six SFPs in the back of a single server. And in the other end, there is an additional six SFPs. And well, we run with mostly 25 gigabits these days. I think there are about $40 each. So it all adds up. We are doing it because we don't have top of rack switches. We have a, a, a very sophisticated patching system that I have done a video moaning about and uh, yeah that does that we can't use this because we do need the connection to be fiber optic cables because we can't do this there is a limit to this now that I am telling you how fantastic it is this cable should not be longer than seven meters but with seven meters you can actually go quite a few racks over to get to a top of rack switch if you have like a middle rack and you have multiple racks going out well, you can have your connections going into that central located rack and seven meters is quite a bit. I believe you can probably go five racks out and still go to the bottom 
and reach uh, top of rack switches five racks away with approximately seven meters. Don't totally quote me on that, but I would estimate it. So, and these have the benefits of being thin. Um, they're not as thin as the fiber optic cable. Well, some of it, we have this older stuff where there is two cables uh, in, in a fiber optic cable, but thinner stuff ha is available. And, and this is some of the thinner stuff and it's, it's more or less, I would guess, one fifth the thickness of, of the duct cable. This is a bit thicker than the modern uh, fiber optic cables. They can be rather thin. But they put two connectors into one tiny cable here and you can see the the difference between the two. If I get out of the way it might even focus a bit on it. So fiber optic cables have the benefits of they can be thinner. But I will still very much recommend using this in the back of the rack because uh, the servers and the switches, they don't care and you get rid of a lot of complexity. This cable does not translate the electric signals and over to light and then send the light through the cable and then the other one translates it back from light to an electric signal. It just transfers the electric signal. It's not that far away from just being another patch cable where it just has some way more fancy connectors. But as this patch cable doesn't know how long it is. Well, this one does. So these knows exactly how much signal to send out through the cable because it knows this is a three meter long cable and to get to the other end, we need to do such and such. So yeah, they can be quite a bit smarter than um, a normal patch cable. So more specialized cables are available. I have one here. This is a QSFP um, and it's 40 gigabits but it doesn't go to another one it goes to four uh, sfp well these are sfp pluses uh, so what's so what's the other ones actually so if you have a 40 gigabit connector in your switch you can connect four connections to a 10 gigabit so that means that well you can connect this in your switch and you can connect this to four different servers or maybe two different servers depending on your needs. So this is quite a nice cable. And I do not believe that that is available in uh, fiber optic cables. You need duct cables. There is also kind of an in-between cable where you um, you get a fiber optic cable, but it has the SFPs uh, put on there already. And these are also okay-ish. The cable is still as fragile but as you don't have to uh, put the SFPs on there yourself, you don't get any dirt in there either. But you can take it apart either. So, so it's kind of as, as a duct cable when you're not using it, where you, um, you have your cable and a couple of big connectors sticking out the side, which is fine. So do let me know in the comments below if you use duct cables and what you recommend them for or if you disagree with uh, what I'm saying which I'm sure someone will <laughs> and as always if you are in need of hardware and especially if you're from the UK I very much recommend but I very much I very much recommend bargain hardware that's bargainhardware.co.uk where you can find all your refurbished hardware at bargain prices <laughs> i don't know maybe i'm not made for marketing but if you use the checkout code my playhouse on your first purchase you get five percent off of your purchase there and they do have a lot of good stuff and often at very nice prices sometimes you need to dig around a little bit and uh, find the good stuff or the affordable stuff because some of the stuff is not that cheap other stuff is a real bargain the more specialized it is the cheaper it usually is so if you're looking for a network card for a blade server then that's the place to get it because they're usually very cheap more mainstream things can be a bit more expensive because it's easier to sell <laughs> yeah bargainhardware.co.uk in the United Kingdom and 5% off with the checkout code MYPLAYHOUSE small letters. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye. Hmm.
I do actually have a network card where this QSFP fits in. So that's kind of cool. Doesn't lock into place. Hmm. Not sure how that works. One should think that that it should say click. It does not. Never mind.